is up you guys welcome back to another one if you were new to the channel i'm gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 volkswagen atlas courtesy of faulkner volkswagen in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so we are in this one today because this is a three row suv with a ton of space i can tell you guys right off the bat it is more space than the telluride than the palisade than the pilot than the highlander it is a freaking large SUV. So if you got kids and you need space, this is definitely one to consider. Two years or 20,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well. So that's gonna save you some money there. And you get a four year, 50,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, which certainly beats the traditional three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2023 volkswagen atlas first one being the se starting at thirty four thousand six hundred dollars se with technology which actually is the one we have today starting at thirty eight thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars sel for forty four thousand three hundred ninety sel r line black for forty eight thousand ninety and then the sel premium r line for fifty one thousand seven hundred ninety dollars now those last three trim levels come standard with all-wheel drive but you can add all-wheel drive to this first two because they come standard with front wheel if you wanted to do that simply add nineteen hundred dollars to either of those prices so you can imagine with all of those trim levels there are actually two different power plants available for the atlas first one being a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 235 horsepower at 5400 rpm 258 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 time for that one 7.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 24 on the highway but then there is that other engine configuration being a 3.6 liter naturally aspirated v6 276 horsepower at 6200 rpm 266 pound feet of torque coming in at 3600 rpm power sent to all four wheels all wheel drive only there through an eight speed automatic zero to 60 times 7.5 seconds so a little bit slower actually with that one mpg numbers for that one 18 in the city 23 in the highway but taking regular unleaded fuel but nonetheless before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the atlas i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a circular dial located directly behind the shifter if you play around with that you got comfort sport economy snow and off-road adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity the all-wheel drive system engagement and the traction and stability control systems as well and so having now gotten all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the acceleration here to the test and let's see how quick we can get our new 2023 Volkswagen Atlas here up to speed. All right, so why I'm adjusting the drive modes here, you guys, it is a little bit different. So there's two types of drive modes. There's the off-road and the on-road drive modes. To adjust the on-road drive modes, being the comfort, the sport, the eco, press in on that mode button. But to adjust the off-road driving modes, you're simply gonna turn this knob to the left or to the right. So I wanted to emphasize that because it does work a little bit differently than most other manufacturers out there. So having said that, I just put it in sport driving mode. I found her straight away. Let me get set up here in three, two, one let's go a little bit of turbo lag yeah once it gets going though it's plenty fine you're definitely not going to have any issues <laughs> okay now it's really going but you're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway but having said that from the get-go there there was a slight bit of turbo lag as you often will find with turbocharged four-cylinder engines so i will say that but again not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 13.2 inch ventilated front disc in the back 12.2 inch ventilated rear disc as far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes it's going to come in at 139 feet let's just hit the brakes hey it's actually not as bad as i remember it i remember before when i tested this thing out the braking feel was insanely soft but it's actually not that bad now I actually didn't mind that. I feel like they've gotten better with the braking feel with the Volkswagen Atlas. And again, this is a larger SUV, so I don't expect it to stop like a sports car, but still, back in the day, it was extremely soft when they first came out, but they have made it better. I feel like they firmed up that braking feel ever so slightly. So honestly, 
I don't mind the braking in this thing now. It's not something that would deter me from getting the Atlas. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's just been 100% perfectly fine. It actually rides really nice. I feel like a lot of larger SUVs, I do find that, and that is definitely no exception with the Atlas. The thing rides extremely smooth as we were cruising over some very smooth Mechanicsburg roads, but yeah, it's definitely no issues with ride quality. As far as steering feel goes, and actually, let me put it back in sport mode for a sec. There is a noticeable difference depending upon which drive mode that you put it in and relative to the steering feel. So I'm gonna take it back out of sport mode here. And you can customize it. There is a custom driving mode as well. So if you wanted a heavier steering feel, but not necessarily that instant acceleration all the time, that is what that custom driving mode is for. And that's personally what I do on my own personal vehicle. So if you like the heavier steering feel like I do, because it is a heavier steering feel in that sport driving mode, that's one way to go ahead and get the best of both worlds there. I'll just put it that way. As far as cabin noise goes, we were going 35 miles per hour. That is 100% on point. Certainly almost no exterior road noise or even wind noise coming into the cabin. So Volkswagen quite honestly did a brilliant job with the cabin noise in this thing. And touching on visibility, I can see pretty darn good out the back for as large as this SUV is. The rear visibility is actually pretty darn good. Not only that, for forward visibility, you get rain sensing windshield wipers that come standard on every single trim level of the Atlas as well. So that's a big win there too. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Volkswagen Atlas. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Volkswagen Atlas finished in deep black pearl. In case you were curious of our exterior color name that we have on this one here today. Let's go ahead and start up front. Of course, you're gonna find a tri-bar front grille finished in chrome in typical Volkswagen Atlas fashion, at least in recent years. LED headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board for added illumination at night. Of course, they will come with LED daytime running lights as well, along with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark in the night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. SEL trim level and up is going to give you automatic high beams, meaning when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when the vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bump it back up to high beams. Then front air curtains to the sides, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. And you're actually going to get an R-line specific front fascia if you were to go with the R-line trim levels or the R-line trim, I should say. But anyways, also some silver accenting towards the bottom portion of that front fascia, but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Atlas. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of this one, black roof rails do come standard, or I should say roof rails in general come standard for all trim levels across the board. They will vary in color though. Like I said, we have the black roof rails for the SE, but if you were to go with the SEL trim levels, you're actually going to get silver roof rails, for example. Rear privacy glass, of course, does come standard across the board. Chrome belt line molding coming standard as well. You guys could probably see that there. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated for all trim levels with LED integrated turn signals then as well. Take a look at the side skirts. They are matte black, which actually really doesn't look all that bad with our pearl black exterior that we have here today. But I will say if you go with one of the R-line trim levels, those actually turn into body colored side skirts as well as fender surround. So a little more high end look, a little better look in my personal opinion. But like I said, the matte black doesn't look bad with the black exterior that we have today though. Let's take a look at the wheel configurations. They will differ with every single trim level surprisingly. So if you ever wander onto a lot, that's definitely a surefire way to distinguish what trim level you're looking at or it's also on the tailgate as well. But nonetheless, 18 inch machine finished alloy for the SE, 20 inch alloys for the SE with technology. We actually do have an added option to turn them into gloss black wheels, which look dang good with our exterior, of course. 20 inch machine finished alloys for the SEL, 20 inch black alloys for the SEL R-Line black, and then 20 inch machine finished alloys for the SEL premium R-Line. So again, differing amongst the trim levels, but it looks pretty darn good from the side profile here. So now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. LED taillights actually do come standard for every single trim level across the board. And like I just mentioned, you will find trim level badging on the back as well. If you were curious what trim level you were looking at, that four motion badging, that just means that this one is coming standard with all wheel drive. That is what uh, Volkswagen calls 
calls their all-wheel drive system as every manufacturer has a different name for it of course you do have that chrome bar kind of tied together the two tail lights and in the middle of it all you have atlas spelled out horizontally of course towards the very bottom you're going to find kind of a a fake exhaust look with the chrome tips there, but it's actually not exhaust system as uh, Volkswagen and Audi typically does. It's actually hidden just below. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. Right, and so but now since we are around to the back of the Atlas, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, I will say it is a power tailgate for every single trim level across the board. Gotta love that. And if you were to go with the SE with technology that we have today, it's actually also a hands-free power tailgate. So if your hands are full, you're covered. That's pretty cool. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 20.6 cubic feet behind that third row, which is actually pretty darn impressive. Behind the second row, 55.5 cubic feet. And with all rows folded, 96.8 cubic feet. That's insanely impressive. So for comparison's sake, I know the Hyundai Palisade comes in at 87 point something cubic feet. Kia Tell you ride 88 cubic feet honda pilot 84 cubic feet or 83.8 to be exact way to highlander comes in at right around 86 point something cubic feet and i don't know how i remember all these numbers but still my point is there is a substantial bit more space in the atlas comparatively speaking to the other three row suvs kind of in its class so that's pretty darn impressive but you can also find grocery bag hooks in the back cargo tie down anchors there's a cargo cover there's cargo lighting of course if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor there's actually a decent amount of in-floor storage which is always important in case you want to put like a tire inflator kit back there or an ice scraper or something like that so definitely pretty much everything you could possibly want in the cargo area but then making our way to the third row legroom the impressiveness continues that third row legroom actually gives you 33.7 inches so with a lot of the other three row suvs you get right around 30 or 31 inches so again 33.7 that's pretty decent so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there of course the second row can push forward and backwards if you wanted to accommodate a third row passenger that's there for you as well rear cup holders and there's several of them back there and it's actually a decent amount of storage for those third row passengers as well and there's actually a little hook to put those third row seat belts if they were not in use you can fold the third row down for added cargo space and you got the hook for the seat belt so they're out of the way that's pretty well thought out as well and of course you do have rear ventilation for the third row passengers as well but so then making our way to the second row legroom that comes in at 37.6 inches again for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there and actually for the second row you have your option between bench seating and captain's chairs we do have the bench seating obviously captain's chairs is the two seats with the center walk through way heated second row seats though coming with the sel premium there is a 115 volt power outlet for that second row you usually don't find that in three row suvs that was pretty cool two usb charging ports for the second row passengers but my very favorite rear window sunshades coming on this one that is that is pretty darn cool the alternative is you just buy the cheap ones from walmart and they never really work good or your kids rip them off the window one or the other happens but i like that they come standard and they're pretty nice on this one and actually tri-zone climate control is going to come with the se with technology that we have today and up so therefore rear passengers have the ability to set their own temperature back there as well so that is pretty darn good definitely very well thought out and also with the bench heating i almost forgot to mention center armrest with cup holders so very well thought out second row here in the atlas then make our way to the front seats eight-way power driver's seat with four-way power lumbar coming standard leatherette surfaces coming standard heated front seats coming standard memory settings for the sel trim level and up power adjustable passenger seat for the r-line black trim level and up ventilated front seats for the sel premium you get leather then for the premium r-line as well and overall when it comes to seat comfort it is power adjustable so honestly it was plenty comfortable the lumbar adjustment was very adjustable i'll just say that typically you don't get this kind of adjustments when it comes to the power lumbar so extremely adjustable for the power lumbar i was very impressed there but so then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leatherette wrapped that does come standard on this one it is tilt and telescoping of course and it is heated if you were to go with the sel trim level and up and overall i like the new emblem in the middle i still still getting used to the new emblem i know it was just kind of recent but very nice steering wheel it's kind of a flat bottom as well then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your volkswagen logo surrounded by chrome on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch and 
times two button is gonna be your remote start that comes standard, by the way, on every single trim level across the board. Gotta love that. And there is a keyless entry with a push button start for all trims as well. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the shifter there. And so once started up, there's gonna be two different configurations here. There is an eight inch digital gauge cluster, which comes standard on the SE trim level. However, newly standard for the SE with technology trim level that we have today, you now get the 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster. Whereas if you got this trim in the past, it would have been the eight inch. So that's really, I would say the big change for 2023 if there was one. So that is pretty darn good. That's what you're looking at right now. And there is this little view button on the steering wheel that completely changes the look. You can make it uh, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's kind of this information section if you want. There of course is your standard speedometer and tachometer up there. So, so much customization to the digital gauges. Volkswagen and Audi both do this incredibly well. Some of my favorite gauges out there. So well done Volkswagen. The gauges look amazing. They make our way to overall interior quality panoramic sunroof is going to come on the sel trim level and up so we don't have it today unfortunately overhead sunglass holder coming standard though gotta love that tri-zone climate control like i was mentioning with the se with technology trim level and up led interior lighting for every single trim level across the board you usually do not find that on the competition i want to emphasize that ambient interior lighting for the sel trim level and up wireless phone charger is going to come standard gotta love that that's just in front of the shifter by the way so that is pretty cool you usually don't find that standard either there is a little bit of rubberized storage just above the infotainment screen. I don't want to forget to mention that. There's kind of this uh, plastic, cool looking fake wood trim on the doors as well as just above the passenger side glove box. Just in front of the shifter, like I was mentioning, you got the wireless phone charger, but also a 12 volt power outlet, a couple phone charging ports. To the right of the shifter, you have dual cup holders. There's an electromechanical parking brake and within the center armrest, a decent amount of storage there as well. And I do like the contrast stitching on the doors in white. That looks pretty darn good. So. Overall, yeah, this interior is definitely working for me. I got no complaints personally. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. You're gonna get a 6.5 inch color touchscreen display for the SE trim level. But if you were to go with the SE with technology that we have today, that's gonna bump up to an eight inch color touchscreen display. Either way though, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Factory navigation system is coming on the SEL trim level and up. You can adjust your climate control settings up there as well. And of course your radio information and so When it comes to the sound systems, there's a couple of them. You got six speakers for all trim levels, but the premium because that premium is gonna give you a Fender premium sound system with a subwoofer. So that of course is not the one we have today. We got the six speakers. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. All right, I gotta be honest, for six speakers, that's better than just about all the six speaker sound systems that I've tested. It's definitely plenty of loudness. I could see why that would be perfectly fine, even for three rows, plenty of clarity. And actually the bass was kind of impressive too. So for that not being the upgraded Fender sound system, that was pretty darn good. Well done, Volkswagen. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you coming standard across the board, of course, and a surround view monitor coming with the premium trim level then as well, which is always, it's going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, high pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking, and actually front and rear parking sensors as well. That's another one that doesn't come standard typically on other three row SUVs. So rear parking sensors, yes, but not the front ones as well. That's pretty cool. SEL trim level and up then is also are going to add road sign assist so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the atlas incredible amount of space especially when you compare it to a lot of other three row suvs out there in the same price range so that's wonderful digital gauges are great i absolutely love them on the volkswagen audi and volkswagen like i said do a wonderful job there and as far as room for improvement goes i can really only think of one but if you look up the iehs top safety pick rating this isn't one for whatever reason. So I don't know what the details are there. Maybe it's not been tested. I don't know, but it doesn't show that it's an IHS top safety pick. But other than that, this thing's pretty darn nice. So let me know what you guys think with the Atlas in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.